Well, joining me is a young man who turned his back on a possible career in rugby league after falling in love with harness racing. To explain more, I'm joined by Jake Bates. Well, Jake, good to catch up with you. Now, before we start having a look at your possible career in rugby league and how you've developed into harness racing, one of the key ingredients as far as you being involved in the industry is through your grandpa, Jim, and he had a course for celebration last week. Yeah, no, he has. He's sort of guided me through my career so far. He's um, taught me all the things about harness racing and all that sort of thing. He's been a great influence to me. Yeah, and last Thursday, I was happy to drive him as well. He got his hunter's uh, training win, so it was a pretty happy camp on Thursday. So yeah, it was good. Jim's always been a uh, wonderful man with a horse. Yeah, he always has. He's pretty. He's a real good horseman. He's done it for about 50 years. So, no, nah, he's done a real good job. So... Your introduction into racing and the fact that you started to fall in love with the horses, in particular harness racing, all commenced in Albury? Yeah, it did. So all my family, so my mum, all my cousins, they've all been involved in the horses their whole life. And as a young, I was about when I was young, I didn't really do much with horses as much, but they were always around, so I was always amongst them. But um, then when I came up here, I sort of just got into harness racing pretty heavily, and now we're here we are. And Jake, before you did that, you were certainly very much into rugby league and so much so you showed a lot of potential and the Penrith Panthers came calling. Yeah, so yeah, when I was about 15 I sort of left Albury, left mum and everyone I sort of came up here to pursue footy and did it for a couple of years and then once I sort of started working and then I got into the horses I sort of just, I had to pick one or the other and I picked working horses so and that was the end of my football career. Well, Jake, with the situation there, Penrith, training with Penrith Panthers and training horses, they're pretty close together. Yeah, it's sort of close. It's a lot harder doing football, I can tell you. But, yeah, no, nah, just sort of picked horses over football. And probably a good thing because you fall in love with these. And, yeah, so it was good. One horse that certainly uh, Jim had a lot of success for, and no doubt you've uh, got a very fond uh, situation as well with his Max Ferrari. Yeah, no, nah, he was... Um, yeah. Jimbo's favourite horse. He, um, he only bought him for about five thousand from the Bathurst sales. I think he won him about a hundred and forty thousand, and he won Indy City Pace and everything as well. So, no, he was a very nice horse for the stable. Cast our mind back just a week or so, and another Meg's horse, Meg's Monaro, was involved in that incident that uh, resulted in Steph Morris going to hospital and having to be stood down for a little while. Both David and Steph, and uh, the third member of that particular party was you. Yeah, no, it was a pretty nasty fall for the horse and myself, but. No, we both got up all right and sort of he's just he got a bit of a sore knee, but besides that, he was all right. So we sort of got out of the lucky end of it. And the good news, Jake, is Steph has passed all her protocols, head concussion, so forth, and has been given the tick of approval and she'll be back in action on Saturday night. In fact, she'll be driving at Penrith as well. Yeah, that's good. She, um, the way she fell and she landed, it didn't look didn't look real good when I got up and had a look at her. So that's good for her. She's, she's a tough bugger. Now you've got an involvement also with uh, David Brown on a couple of levels. Uh, he's certainly been an influence on your career at the moment. Oh, he definitely has, yeah. I'm dating um, his daughter, Joni, and um, no, the whole family's been a great influence to me and let me move in and doing all the horses and stuff. So, no, they've done it. They've helped me away a lot. So, And how many horses do you work? Um, well, at the moment, yeah, there's about seven or eight, and there's another one coming. So it'll be about nine or ten in probably the next couple of weeks. So... No, we're pretty busy at the moment with work and doing the horses, so that's good. And, of course, another member of that particular family who's going great guns at the moment, a very outstanding young prospect, is uh, Jack. Yeah, no, he's doing a good job, isn't he? He's, um, he's driving well, and, no, the way he keeps going, he's going to be a real top-line driver, so no, he's doing a real good job. And so far, Jake, the numbers as far as success is concerned is building all the time, and you've just started a new venture as far as the last season or two into the training aspect. Yeah, no, I sort of just trained a couple for here and there. Um, I actually got my first opportunity training from actually Kevin Bazzuto gave me a couple of horses. So that's how it all started and got a couple of mates involved as well. And no, it's kicked off pretty well so far. So that's no, good. And it's a different ball game training, isn't it, Jake? There's so much to learn and you continue to learn. Oh, there is. You never stop learning doing the, doing the horses. So no, you're, especially with all different horses, they always have their quirks, but... No, it's come along good. Another influence outside of, of course, your pop and uh, David? Uh, probably my mum and probably my cousins. And um, you sort of look on a few drivers as well, and they're always influencers like the Robbie Morrises and the Luke McCarthy. You sort of try and take it all in with their what they do, even in the stabling area to driving and that sort of stuff. So uh, sort of everyone all around. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of experience over in the barn to call on. Oh, there definitely is. They're, they're professionals. So, 
especially young fellas like myself, you've always got to look up to them and try and take it all in, whatever they do. Yeah, Jake, 2016 will always go down in your memory. I don't think you'll ever forget that particular year because it was the year you drove your first winner. It was at Penrith, 125 to 1 on a horse that you have so much uh, tie for, Hooded Angel. Yeah, no, nah, that was a great night. He's um, one of my all-time favourites. He is. He's sort of just always done the job and... No, everyone was pretty happy that day. Even a couple, even one of my mates who was actually the end up being the owner of him, he he was he was wrapped with it. So, no, it was a great day. And Jake, apart from winning your first race in 2016, that something also happened out of the blue and quite unexpectedly in rugby league circles. Yeah, so I'm a Cronulla Sharks fan, and we won our first premiership in 50 years. So. Yeah, that weekend, it was quite a big weekend, I can tell you. So. I thought you would have been a Penrith boy after being asked to play for them. No, nah, I don't really like Penrith too much. So <laughs> just, I've been a Sharks through and through, so always stuck by him, and yeah, no, it was good. Who's your favourite player? Uh, probably at that stage was probably James Maloney at that stage. He was a Sharks player at that at point, so probably he was. And you were a halfback, and Penrith have got a pretty fair halfback at the moment. Yeah, no, he is. He actually played above me when I was playing in the Penrith comp, and he's always been a freak, and he still is, so, yeah, no. Yeah, we speak of Nathan Cleary. Any regrets that you didn't follow your career in rugby league? Um, probably, maybe a little bit. I probably just should have just kept going with it and stuck my guns to it, but uh, it's in the past now. It is what it is, and just got to keep doing these and working and live it day by day, I guess. And no doubt... As a halfback, you would have been pretty cheeky. Yeah, I was always trying to, I was always getting in there, but as soon as the rough would come out, I was out, so always. Well, Jake, it's great to catch up with you and continue success going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you.